Um, I'm from a Palestinian family of Greek origin. Um, my family is a kind of mix of, it's predominantly Melkite Catholic, but there are Maronite parts to it. There are uh, a lot of agnostic and atheist people, and then there are also some Sunnis as well, mainly converts as well. Um, my family, obviously, because of the Palestinian issue, is spread all over the world. So there's family in Cyprus, but there's also family in Syria, Lebanon. Once upon a time, there's family in Jordan as well, but they moved out. Uh, there's family in Chile, in the United States, Canada, here, of course, Australia. Um, largely speaking, I would say that my family in Europe and the Americas is not very religious, whereas the family back in the Middle East tends to be. And since a lot of them are Arab Christians, uh, they are very religious. They're very um, in touch with their faith. Um, but I wasn't brought up to be very religious at all. My my dad wasn't religious at all. Um, at the time when it really like shapes you as a child, nor was my mum. So recently, you know, so I was like experiencing as a child. So there'll be Catholic, the Catholic faith would be a large part of my life. But then there'll be Sunni Islam and then agnosticism and even atheism, just detachment from religion altogether. So there came a time, reasonably recently, where I just thought it's time for me to see, you know, I need to actually see whether I, you know, where my faith lies, what religion is right for me, uh, or if any religion is right for me. You know, lots of people said to me, you know, this is kind of like a, a trend where you just go away from religion altogether and eventually you become atheist. You know, that's what some friends told me. Um, I was adamant that wasn't going to happen to me. So I, I, the more I, you know, I looked into Christianity as well, you know, my family's religion, I thought, you know, if they all follow it, then maybe I should be following it too. Um, it's a great faith, but it just didn't seem right for me. So I just thought, um, you know, I looked into Islam just in general as a general concept, and it just seemed to make more sense to me. Um, so eventually down the line I w did like I was just a proper Muslim but then I didn't really um associate with a sect or de denomination or anything like that because I just didn't feel like I knew enough um but I looked into Sunni Islam and its various schools and and I looked into Ahmadi Islam as well but um when I looked into Sh when I looked into Shia Islam it just seemed like the more complete and the phrase that I would use is probably Whereas the other forms of Islam are still Islam, um, and they're still people who follow them are still Muslims. To me, it just felt like, from from the outside coming into the faith, it just felt like Shia Islam was the perfect version of Islam. So I wanted to follow the complete version, the complete form of Islam, and that's just what Shia Islam was to me. And then, you know, recently I announced it, and then, kind of going from there, just trying to become the best Muslim I can, and the best way to do that is just to get as educated as possible. So I was born in London. And I was raised in London, lived in a reasonably uh, Western family, you know, quite quite British, to be honest. And then um, I wasn't brought up to be too religious with anything, really, you know. So we knew full well that our family back home, you know, the Christians back in Syria and, Le and Lebanon, were um, they're very religious, you know, Maronites, especially in our family, tend to be very stereotypically religious. And then... Um, Maybe back here, maybe not so much. Uh, there's various parts of my mum's family, especially. My dad's not so much. That is Sunni Muslim. But even them, they, the reason why I wasn't too in touch with that either is because they weren't religious either. So um, as a child, you know, you go through phases of maybe feeling attached to the Catholic faith, you know, going to, you know, listening to hymns and, you know, have lots of Bibles and crucifixes and, you know, pictures of Jesus and all the rest of it. And then, um, you know, maybe you look into Sunni Islam because you see it quite a lot. And then a lot of the time you think, well, I'm not sure if religion is for me. Or like a lot of people, especially my age, will go through a quite a long phase where they go, you know, maybe I'll decide later. So, you know, maybe I'll just leave it for now. I'll do whatever I want now. And then I can go back later on and just decide what if I want to be part of a religion or not. But for me, it's... Like, it's not good to leave it. Like, I want to know from now because I want to be able to follow the religion of God for as, pos for as long as possible. So, um, 
that's what kind of drove me to get educated, to learn as much as possible. It's quite difficult to, because obviously I do have, I was lucky because unlike others, I had lots of um, Muslims and specifically Shia Muslims around me. So any questions I had, generally they would be answered, but you know, anything too complicated, then you know, people would say maybe try the internet, but the internet isn't as reliable as you might think. So lots of people, and there are lots of people that are out there specifically to deter you or to take you away, or there'll be some people you know different motives then they're not really there for you to learn honestly about the religion they're there to maybe take you away from it or to dissuade you so I mean even now like after you know I, I told everyone about my conversion there's still people you know telling me you know this is what Shias do this is what Muslims do you shouldn't be one you should go back you don't know enough but I just feel like you know I've gone I've learned as much as I you know as I need to to see that this is the path and you know, with all due respect, just because I convert to Catholic, you know, just because I converted to Shia Islam doesn't mean I don't have respect for Maronites or Catholics or Judaism or any other, you know, it's because I'm Shia Muslim now, it just means that my love for all human beings, regardless of their religion or ethnicity or anything like that, is just greater. So, whereas before maybe, maybe people's ethnicity did matter, being a Muslim, you know, the most diverse, probably the most diverse religion in the world. You know, you have people from all over the world pertaining to this one faith, this one religion, this one creed. So it's just, you learn to, we're all human beings. And then that's why I don't really, like, you know, people people like to hate a lot on people who become Shia or people who are Shia from before, of course. They have to live with it. But um, we don't really, re generally speaking, we don't reply or we don't kind of, when we make an argument back, we don't do it in the same kind of way. It's more kind of educational rather than an offence because that's what they kind of, you know, lots of people, they try to dissuade you from, especially Shia Islam, by swearing and by, you know, giving bad examples of things like that happened. And But generally speaking, the reason why I found that Shia Islam is such an honest religion as well, it's not just the brotherhood and the love that's felt between everyone and the faith and the kind of feeling that you get that it's like the perfect form of Islam. It's not just that, the kind of truth to it as well, because, and the kind of honesty and the, um, you know, you go out trying to educate people rather than dissuade people from other things. So it's kind of a more positive thing than a negative impact. So I think that is, that's why I thought that, obviously my family, it's a diverse, you know, being from, you know, our family origins, you know, Greek, Palestinian, you know, Arab living in the Middle East, but spread all over the world. There's a massive range of religions and beliefs. And, but I just thought that this one, which is one that no one else really believes in at the moment in my family, I thought this one was right for me. And I'm kind of trying my best to open my family's eyes just in general, not just restricted to the close family that I have here who are starting to come over, but also to my family in Chile, my family in Syria, my family in Lebanon, my family in, you know, Sydney or wherever, just trying to open their eyes just to get them educated. And even if they choose it, it's not for them, at least they would have found out exactly what it's all about. And to be honest, when people find out about what Shia Islam really is about, then it just becomes that whole lot easier to accept it because it is like a wonderful branch of Islam, which is obviously the perfect faith. Right, so my family is mainly Malkite Catholic, um, but there are a large number of Maronites in relative to, every, like, especially to Sunni Muslims, there's far more Maronites in my family. So in my family, when they moved from Crete, they settled in a, um, a small village called Kefir Beraim, right in the north of Palestine, about well, historic Palestine, four kilometers from the Lebanese border. And the population was mixed Malkite and Maronite. Uh, they're both forms of Catholic Christianity, Eastern Catholic Christianity. Uh, but the Melkites are, uh, it all goes back to from before. So Maronites are follower, followers of a, of, an, of a monk, a Syrian one, that um, moved to the mountains of what is now Lebanon, but back then was it was all great Syria. Um, and they follow a kind of stricter form, and it's more, but both forms compared to other forms of Catholic, so for example, Catholic Christianity, the Latin rite in, uh, the Vatican, you know, people convert in and out of that all the time. So it's not, it's like, you know, it's multicultural. Whereas Melkite and Maronite uh, Christianity 
tend to be very homogeneous. So it's like you, Melkite Catholic uh, Christianity in particular is very, so my, like I said, my family's of Greek origin. That's like the same with everyone who's Melkite really. There was always a very recent link to Greece. Um, Maronite Christianity tends to be a very recent link to Syria. So that's what, kind of where they're from. Um, Maronites, um, they use a, it's like a Greek, Greek church. So the historic language is Greek, um, but generally speaking, since most of they are from the kind of Middle East, they tend to all speak Arabic. Uh, but the Maronites, the language of their uh, church is still Aramaic. And Maronites, even in my family, so, you know, obviously I'm proud of being Palestinian, proud of where I'm from, proud of being Arab and all the rest of it. But my Maronite side of the family tends to identify much more as Aramaic or Syriac, and they don't like to be called Arabs. They think it's not what they are um, because, you know, their church is, it was like persecuted in the past. So they think that if by accepting an Arab identity, that kind of takes them away from their, from their roots as Aramaic and Syriac. Um, well, I've only been to Palestine twice because my father was um, a first generation refugee. He left the north of Palestine in 1948. Uh, he refused to go back to Palestine because he said that it, he always used to say that I refuse to ask my occupier for permission to visit my own homeland. And obviously that's what you have to do when you go to the airport. So um, so my father was heavily involved in the PFLP, Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, um, and the Fatah organization. Uh, and he used to know, he was in contact with the military leadership um, of Hamas as well in Cyprus. That's where my family was used to be based. Um, so I was raised as an ardent nationalist. So I believe strongly in the one state solution that we are, you know, and I, as a Palestinian, I feel that, you know, because Palestine is so diverse historically and still to this date, Palestine is such a historically, religiously diverse area. It's a diverse place. Um, I don't think that religions as such should be used as an exclusive form to return Palestine. I think that uh, certain forms of Islamic extremism Especially now that, you know, I, I associate myself with Shia Islam, I see the Sunni extremists and I see what they do in Iraq and Syria, and I don't want them to get any more extreme. I'd rather that it was all based as kind of a popular movement. You know, wherever, whatever faith you are, we can all live together. I think that's like a core, core foundation of Shia Islam. That's what I feel anyway, that, you know, as human beings, we're all created by God, of course, and we're on the same earth and we have the same kind of mission, which is try to... For, it's all for our, we don't we don't pray we don't fast and we don't do the rest of it for God's good we do it for our own good so we can get into heaven and our role here is to try to be as good people as the best people that we can so we can try to get into heaven and I see that as an important part of being Palestinian too that just because someone has a different faith than me doesn't mean I'm going to try work against them or have any differences with them if a if a Jewish person is not Zionist, then I see him just as much as my brother as a Palestinian who is Christian or Muslim or any other faith. So um, being Palestinian, of course, I'm very proud of it. And it's difficult, though, because there aren't really Palestinian Shias. So if I wanted someone who could I could associate with completely and fully, like 100 percent, then the easiest thing would be a Palestinian Shia who could like I could I could relate to on the kind of national level and the religious level. But. There's only a couple of thousands, couple of thousand really, and there was like a genocide of them of the home, of the town that was Shia near my hometown. Like for example, I saw um, my love for you know the Shia groups in the Middle East specifically was you know is it far outlives my attachment to Islam or Shia Islam or anything like that because obviously the support that the Palestinian people get from Shias all over the Middle East okay is far more in relative than you know from monarchies and else and other things like that from in the Middle East, such as Saudi Arabia and Qatar and other places like that. So I think that if you look at the deep relationship between she, you know, Shias on one side, regardless of nationality, and then the Palestinians as a liberation group, then you see that it's a strong tie. So, you know, Iran, Syria, Hezbollah, the Iraqis, they all work closely to help Palestine, obviously. Lots of them have their own problems now, but you know, even now, even till this date, they still support Palestine as much as possible. And then you see that, and you stand back as a Palestinian, and you think, you know, the sheet—that's that's kind of the initial.